All right, now as we start getting into chapter six, we're gonna be focusing in on the different types of quadrilaterals that there are. That there are. We are gonna be starting out today with parallelograms. And what we wanna be able to do today is to recognize and apply the properties of the sides and the angles of parallelogram. And then also recognize and apply the properties of the diagonals of a parallelogram. When we look at parallelograms, you probably think back to your younger years and knowing a, um, the definition of a parallelogram, which says that um, a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides being parallel to each other. So pretty much the definition that you have been given before is the fact that you have a parallelogram if opposite sides are parallel to each other. And that's all that's really been given to us. We know that it's a four-sided figure. So with there being four sides to this um, polygon, we have four angles also. We can use the properties from yesterday, knowing that because it is a quadrilateral, I know that the four interior angles are going to have to add up to 100 and, or 360 degrees. And I know that the exterior angles will also have to add up to 360 degrees. But there are, some also, there are also some other really important characteristics that come along with a parallelogram that proves that it's a parallelogram and not just any um, quadrilateral that's out there. So that's what we're gonna be going through now. And I'm gonna be taking just a moment here to talk about what are the seven properties of a parallelogram. And these seven properties are gonna become really important for us. And we're going to be having a quiz on these seven properties when you come to class. So what you're going to want to be able to do here is under, write down these seven properties and start to study them. And what I want to do is take a practice quiz tomorrow in class, and we'll be, I'll be asking you to restate these seven properties. So the first one is exact, comes from the definition of a parallelogram which says that opposite sides are going to be parallel to each other. I'm going to go ahead and label my parallelogram here of A, B, C, D. And so our first property here is that opposite sides are parallel. I'm going to use shorthand notation here. And so this is telling me that B, C is parallel to AD, and it's telling me that AB has to be parallel to CD. So that's the first part of being a parallelogram. The opposite sides must be parallel to each other. Then the second one that we're going to be looking at here is the fact that opposite sides are always congruent to each other. So when I'm talking about congruence here, I know that segment AB is going to be congruent to segment CD. And BC is going to be congruent to segment AD. What it does not mean is that not necessarily are all four of them congruent to each other. But I know that the opposite sides must be congruent. So AB is congruent to CD. And BC is congruent to AD. Next, we're going to work with some more congruency here, and I'm going to talk about how opposite angles are congruent to each other. Angle B and angle D are congruent to each other, along with angle A and angle C. So opposite angles are congruent. So this is saying that angle B is congruent to angle D, and it tells us that angle A is congruent to angle C. Now the next couple here are some that um, we're going to have to draw in some things and also take some, draw some conclusions from past problems that we've dealt with. And the next one here that I'm going to look at is the fact that consecutive angles are going to be supplementary to each other. And so I take you back to when we were working with parallel lines and looking at transversals. 
if I draw these two lines, which are parallel to each other, and now I take this blue line, which is the transversal line, what this is creating here is this is creating angle A and angle B to be consecutive interior angles. Well, consecutive interior angles, remember those are going to be supplementary to each other. So what we're going to say next here is that consecutive angles are supplementary. Now, what that means here is that angle A and angle B have to add up to 180 degrees. It also means that angle C and angle D, those two angles add up to 180 degrees. It means that angle B and angle C add up to 180 degrees, and angle A and angle D add up to 180 degrees. We're talking about angles that are next to each other. Oops. And so then I'm just going to go ahead and write next to this, we're going to say that the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle A equals 180 degrees. Now I could write down four more statements just like that, but just to save some time, I'm going to leave it just as that one. The next one then is going to come from looking at what we call diagonals. I'm going to erase what I have here just so I can... write a little bit more. So I had A, B, C, and D. So now I'm going to draw in some diagonals, which is a line that connects the opposite vertices together. And what happens with your diagonals is, first of all, diagonals share a common midpoint. So they are going to cross, and this right here is going to be the midpoint. Now that's going to tell us two things. If it's the midpoint, then that tells us that D to C is equal to, or D, I should make this an X. D to X is equal to X to D. And then it tells us that A to X is equal to X to C. So diagonals share a common midpoint. And by doing that, they are also bisecting each other because you're cutting each of those segments in half. So we have diagonals. Share a common midpoint. And then diagonals bisect each other. And then the last one. What's happening here with your diagonals is you are creating two congruent triangles. And from here, the reason we're, we're creating two congruent triangles is I know that AD and CD are congruent to each other. I know that, or sorry, this is AB. I know that AD and BC are congruent to each other. And because of the reflexive property, BD is going to be congruent to BD. So these two triangles are congruent to each other because of side, side, side. Um, we could also say that angle A and angle C are congruent to each other. And so we could do side, angle, side if we, side, angle, side if we wanted to. We've got a couple different options. But what happens here is the diagonal creates... two congruent triangles. And this here, are our, these are our seven properties for a parallelogram. These seven properties, what I want you to do is work on them and study them for tomorrow. We'll have a practice quiz on them. I'll give you a blank piece of paper and you're going to list out all seven of the properties. Opposite sides are parallel. Opposite sides are congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. Consecutive angles are supplementary. Diagonals share a common midpoint. Diagonals bisect each other. And then a diagonal creates two congruent triangles. Probably the ones that are missed most often are the last four. 
So those are the real tough ones that people usually struggle with. So those are some that I would suggest that you work on a little bit. If you have any questions on things, let me know. Otherwise, that's it for parallelograms.